I'm at Twy Cross Zoo about to watch daughter Laura perform as a seahorse on stilts, of course, with assorted other stilted animals. Uh, this animal, Mitch's tufted deer, is not on stilts, it's in the back by its hut. And I'm just reading the notice and it says, Mitch's tufted deer are crepuscular. What a fabulous word, crepuscular. This means they are most active at dawn and dusk. I've never thought of myself as crepuscular before, but that just about sums me up. I've seen uh, zebras in their pyjamas ignoring me and uh, I've seen the monkeys monkeying about. Did you know, oh, I'm sure you do, that we share 90%, 98% no less of our DNA with uh, monkeys, bonobos, chimpanzees, gorillas. Just 2% separates us. And of course, a, uh, a wire wall or an electric fence like this one. And I couldn't help smile when I thought to myself, if the camera was on the other foot, so to speak, in the hands of the gorilla or the chimpanzees, what they would think of us <laughs> and uh, what what words they would use to describe these uh, bipeds, these two-legged walking upright instead of the proper way, which is uh, on four legs, of course. And uh, wondering what a funny species we were and how odd it is that we choose to hem ourselves into our na native habitats, particularly in the West, I'm thinking, which is what I'm familiar with, of our consumer and destructively producer society that we have created. And I think everybody uh, visiting the zoo, including the children, are both enchanted and appalled to see wild animals in captivity. Even though I do appreciate that um, the, many of the animals here are endage, endangered, endange, endangered, an endangered species and this zoo is, has a very active program of protecting them from extinction so fair, fair dues there. Uh, it is of course <laughs> extinction at the hands of man which includes hunters. We're looking for the tiger There's a, a tiger, Sumatran tiger, somewhere along here. I'll just have another look along here, unless it's so well camouflaged. Let's see if you can spot it. But just as sure as these natural wild animals are kept unnaturally 
for our viewing pleasure. Um, I can't help thinking that the vast majority of us, and to a large degree myself, I would include myself in it, are be behind bars of a society that has long lost contact with the natural, the natural world. Uh, and indeed, it's one reason why I'm looking forward to moving to what is called a tiny house in a wood by a pond to write my books. Being closer to nature, having a hopefully a lower carbon footprint, a, a, a simpler life, that's the idea. Sounds good to me whether I will actualize it and whether I will find a more isolated, simpler life uh, acceptable, enjoyable or bearable remains to be seen but it's definitely uh, my current inclination well it's been my current inclination for some years actually Oh well, I will just show you, it might be a bit difficult through this glass, but at the back there is a Sumatran tiger lying, actually on its side, sleeping. It's having a Sunday nap. Isn't it interesting? Here we are. The, the, uh, the tiger gift shop. Is that the right way round? Or is it laterally inverted? Isn't it a funny thing how we like to package and brand? and commoditize and monetize even the natural world. It's almost as though as a species, what we called culture, human culture, we have invented a whole new language of symbols. By that I mean not just words, languages, but uh, brands. And we're also, it seems to me, we're also well regulated or learned. We're very familiar with our brands, our Adidas trainers, or what, Nike trainers or whatever your particular brand is. Even your brand of water, what brand of still or sparkling water do you buy in a supermarket? I know, I'm just musing on one of the objects of the uh, Spiritual Unfoldment Charitable Trust, which I am a trustee of, along with John and others. Um, John Butler, that is. One of the objects is, it states quite simply, to discriminate between the natural and the unnatural. Well, I'll just see if you can discriminate between whether I'm natural or unnatural compared with these lovely, I don't even know what they're called. That's how, how far my zoological there, there seems to be a type of llama. I'm going to have to go, go and find an information post to see what these are. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you. Oh no, this is wrong. This says Patagonian Mara, but that's like a hare. It's not, it's not those. Uh, clearly, I think they are a variety or a, a <laughs> they look to be a cross between a deer and a llama. Maybe, maybe it's a brand of animal called a larder. 
No, I don't think that's been used. Yes, this object to discriminate between the natural and the unnatural. What does it mean? Natural. Like nature. Undisturbed by human interference, perhaps. Unmolested. The Spanish for do not disturb is no me molesta. Don't disturb me. And uh, I suppose every animal in this zoo and every other zoo has in a way been molested by man and uh, for their own protection it is, it is the uh, approved wisdom they are incarcerated but uh, kept nicely and fed daily I can't help feeling in the, in the worst aspects some of the worst aspects of uh, human unnaturalness we have become estranged from nature and led by the nose by brands and corporates and populist prime ministers and it feels for me like it's time to change that you can make your own mind up